Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome back to Fallout 76 for a new Legendary Weapon Spotlight. We're gonna start our return to these videos with the bloodied explosive submachine gun I picked up at the purveyor just a couple weeks ago. Now, for those who've watched my previous Weapon Spotlights, you'll notice a little change this time around. In the past, I spent a good bit of time going over my build and perk cards at the beginning and put in timestamps so people could jump to the areas they wanted to see. It turns out that most people, well, they ended up just jumping to the action and really not much changed in my build from one video to the next, so rather than spend 8 or 9 minutes essentially repeating the same stuff week after week, I'm just going to show what's going on in the build during the intro like you've just been seeing. Anybody that's really interested can pause to see what's going on, and if there's some significant change or I'm using something in a unique way, I'll be sure to talk about that during the testing run. Now without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into things, we'll head on over to the White Spring and start murdering some ghouls. Alright, let's see what we're getting into here. Now remember, I recorded this a few weeks back uh, after I got the weapon, so the treasure hunter mole miners were still alive. We can see that they were no trouble at all, and I'm expecting this weapon to be very efficient. With the bloodied effect and explosive, it's going to do a pretty good job. Even here, we're one-shotting these ghouls with headshots. So despite the fact that the submachine gun is an underpowered commando weapon, this one should still do really, really well. And here I'm taking my time and one-shotting these guys instead of just... Uh, spraying and praying like we would have done with a similar weapon in Fallout 4, just to showcase that this is in fact still quite a powerful weapon. In fairness, ghouls are really squishy, so it doesn't take much to kill them, but it's still fun to do. So we get the fun and excitement of explosions and a powerful weapon all in one. What I like about this weapon is uh, it's got really low recoil, which is great especially if you do want to hip fire it, uh, maybe take advantage of that auto aim feature or not auto aim, but the aim assist feature that is now available when using controllers that can come in handy. Reducing your recoil is really nice there. But the other big thing is it's got a nice big fat drum magazine so we can hold a lot of bullets without needing to reload. That's definitely a big factor here. One of your more uh, popular legendary effects in the game, of course, is the quad effect. And we've got a ghoul behind us. All right, I think we're okay now. So yes, going back to my thought, one of the more popular effects in the game is quad. And we want that so that we can hold a whole lot of ammo. Well, now we can hold a whole lot of ammo with a weapon like this and still take advantage of bloodied. So if you're comparing this to something like a quad fixer or a quad handmade, are we maybe balancing that a little bit by giving ourselves 62 rounds of ammo and more damage? So this is still quite the powerful weapon, especially with headshots and VATS criticals in the build. And really that just points to the overall power of a VATS critical stealth commando build, but that power does not compete with the power of a sneaky ghoul at the White Spring coming up to murder me from behind. All right, let's finish this place up. One more treasure hunter. So I had picked up uh, quite a number of treasure hunters here, which was nice because I didn't really do... I didn't spend a whole lot of time hunting the treasure hunters. We've got another ghoul here. Let's head outside and see who we can clear out here. So far, it's looking pretty empty. And I think we're in the clear. Let's just double check. Nope, one more. Anybody else? Ah, uh, just some rad stags. Anybody else? Nope. Let's head to the deep and kill some commies. Okay. Back to the catwalk to commie land for the first time in... Oh, uh, what has it been? About two months since we've been uh, doing weapon spotlights. And yeah, the weapon continues to impress. A combination of bloodied explosive and a pretty capable stealth commando build is basically unstoppable, at least for general farming in Fallout 76. And that's what we're doing here. We're just farming commies and their robotic friends. A little bit of vats does us good. So even the liberators here are a little tankier than what we saw over at the White Spring with the ghouls. But even at range, 
Commies are pretty easy to take out. We'll just keep sneaking around. Anybody hanging out out front? Oh, look, we got one guy out here. And you're dead now. Anybody else? Uh, one more. All right, let's head around back. Uh, are you sneaking out the front? No. Uh, no, let's go get our missile sniper first. Missile sniper's always hanging out on the roof up here, at least. If they don't clip into the walls. Usually right there. There we go. Goodbye, you're dead. We'll just hop on down here. And see... Oh, we've got our legendary communist commander snuck around from the back. So for those of you who have doubted, there's your confirmation. You can, in fact, spawn legendaries down here. I'd say it's about uh, half and half. About a 50-50 shot that you'll get one. Sometimes you get more than one. Sometimes you get there. We got two. Look at that. Isn't that exciting, everyone? We've got legendary enemies dropping trash for us. That is the dream. We are living the Fallout 76 dream by picking up legendary garbage from legendary enemies. There should be just a few upstairs. There, we've got another power armor commander. Not a challenge at all. One more. And we're clear. So from here, let's head on over to Solomon's Pond and take out a behemoth. So I'm going to level with all of you. I don't think there's really going to be a single surprise in this video. Uh, a bloodied explosive stealth commando weapon is going to do well in the hands of a character that is built to be a stealth commando. So we shouldn't be surprised by that. With that said, the submachine gun gets a lot of hate. Uh, it's not a popular weapon. It's very much looked down on and it's overlooked when we compare it to the handmade or the fixer. And that's because those weapons do more damage. But like we said earlier, with that extra capacity on here, maybe we're overlooking this one undeservedly. It certainly doesn't do as much damage per shot as some of those other weapons do. Maybe it's not as ideal for boss fights, but it's a cool weapon. They did a really nice job with the design of it. I like the sound of it with the suppressor on there. Uh, it still does very well at range with the right mods on it. So I've got really nothing to complain about when it comes to this weapon. Even free aiming like this, we're doing pretty well, especially with the aim assist on the controller now. Of course, our VATS criticals are definitely the way to go. No doubt about it, we're getting quicker kills like that. Let's see if we can uh, get a little tap tap on the Scorch Beast here. Draws attention down towards us. All right, so far so good. And VATS, of course, calculating when it wants to calculate. Okay, we've regenerated. Can we kill him before he picks back up? I think so. I think so. Yes, indeed we can. There's one more Scorched over here. I see you, and now you're dead. So, legendary Scorch Beast to top all that off. So, once again, weapons doing well. Nice, fast kills for even big, tough enemies. Let's head on over to Huntersville. All right, here we go. Time for some super mutant murder science. Anybody home? No? Oh, we got one up the road here. We'll head back up there in a minute. Just a level 50. Goes down easy even without vats. Did we kill the dog with the splash damage? I don't see the, the dog anywhere. Maybe we did. All right, well, let's go get the guy up by the water cooler. He's usually here. Easy kill again. No one should be surprised at this point. This weapon is pretty damn solid. And we've got a treasure hunter in the area. A little bit of free aim. Easy enough. I'm just keeping my eyes open for that dog. I didn't see it die, and I don't want it to come and eat my face. But it might come and eat my face anyway. Now that's a different dog. That's okay, we'll kill that dog too. Oh no, he's found a way to... Yeah, he's a sneaky dog. Sneaky, sneaky face eater. Alright, we've got more super mutants that need to die. Another legendary... Thank you very much. You need to go away and not eat my face. 
We'll head on upstairs, take out the treasure hunter, and probably one more mutant. You got a treat for me, do you? Well, a little bit late to the party with that treat. And I think we're clear in the house. Let's just run up the road. We'll have a boy and his dog wandering down here somewhere. Where are you? Where are you? I see you. There you are. Test out the range on this thing a little bit. Eh, reasonable accuracy. Even at range. Don't think we're having any trouble. Did we get a kill on that last one? I think we did. Everybody's dead now. Look at that. Let's talk conclusions. As I said, there's really no reason to be surprised by this one. A bloodied explosive commando weapon in the hands of a character built to be a stealth commando is going to be extremely efficient. But it wouldn't surprise me if some of you weren't expecting the weapon to be this good. There are two popular classes of commando weapons. Fixers, handmaids, and railway rifles for those who don't want to be sneaky, and the second class weapons like the assault rifle and the submachine gun that are still pretty good but don't do as much damage. With legendary effects like the ones on this weapon, I'd suggest that the submachine gun might really belong in that higher tier, at least in situations like this. We get almost as much ammo capacity as a quad handmade or fixer, plus the extra damage that comes with bloodied. Does it outclass a bloodied version of those same weapons? Probably not, but is it a better choice than a quad version? Opinions will vary, but I'd say it at least merits a reasonable discussion. The weapon looks great, sounds great, feels great to use, and is reminiscent of the spray and pray from Fallout 4. Let's be honest, it basically is the spray and pray from Fallout 4. And you know what? Almost all of us love that weapon, at least for a little while. So it's hard to go wrong with that. If you want to throw on a fedora, an old suit, and do your best gangster impression while you run around the wasteland murdering things, even better. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of this one. As always, if you enjoyed it and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. You can follow me on Twitter. There's always a lot more to come on the channel. And I hope I see you all next time.